the next industrial revolution. Okay, so I, I'm going to go through a talk that uh, that I gave to the um, the, the tech summit uh, the last month, and um, which is kind of it's formulated. I I learned it off, so it's kind of it's kind of coherent. And then I'll go on a kind of a, a, a rant then afterwards, just unstructured rant for a while, and then. Somebody tell me to shut up then when half an hour is up. Okay, um, so and you, you'll want to see, I also have a uh, the 3D model of Cork. Um, I should probably just take that out now. It's over here. So this is, this is Cork City in I think it's one to fourteen thousand. Um, the scale, and um, so this this is printed in uh, nine parts, and um, it's uh, printed with a, a printer that um, was uh, acquired through um, Science Foundation Ireland funding funding for Designer Dojo. Um, and I'm gonna I'm gonna need a volunteer to hold this up later on. Um, just to kind of show some ideas of what I want to do. So um, I'll, I'll leave that over here and we can do that later again. Right, so um, the next industrial revolution, um, Cork 3D printing. So I'm, I'm a pro Cork man, and uh, so um, first my first natural inclination was to print the city when, uh, when I started uh, kind of thinking about what to do about 3D printing. Um, so just uh, just going through um, and, and, and talking about um, myself and what I do. So I describe myself as a, a virtual architect, and which means I design things in virtual space. I design buildings in virtual space, and then so I can test them. So they, I know that they work, that they they stand up, they fit, the, the different parts fit together. I can um, do cost analysis, we can do energy analysis, which we've actually done um, with uh, somebody who was doing a study, we did energy analysis. Um, and um, there's all kinds of things that you can, um, all kinds of advantages to virtually constructing before you actually construct. So it's just a piece of video of, um, uh, you know, again, like, you know, just showing off a little bit of egomania, uploading myself to Sketchfab, which is a, 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 a site there. I'll show you later on the, the Cork City model is uploaded on that. Um, and you can you can upload a model and change the model into different materials and put different backgrounds and stuff. So it's, it's pretty fun and it's free. Um, I'm just um, trying to get the kids who come to Designer Dojo interested in it. Um, okay, so this idea made in Cork, Few people interested and um, um, in 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 creating a kind of um, a, a forum for um, talking about uh, virtual modeling and three D printing, and um, you know getting it into kind of mainstream mainstream awareness and mainstream discussion, um, and um, really just this is one of the memes um, that. Um, that uh, I, I, I put forward and another one is the Cork 3D Printing Museum which I'll talk about later um, talking about the history of Cork um, uh, we, had, we had the the, ex the the Great Exhibition in 1902-1903 anybody not here at the Cork Industrial Exhibition everybody heard of it? No? no, I can see a face over there you know. um, no, we had an exhibition here, I promise, um, in 1902-1903, uh, and um, like the, 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 I mean, one of the really undersold things in the city is, is the train station, and it's a beautiful piece of Victorian architecture, uh, or, uh, sorry, well, architecture engineering, um, and, um, you know, the, 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 these, these uh, beautiful trusses and this curved, um, curved building. Um, and this is one of the buildings, like, there's a whole rake of buildings built in Fitzgerald Park, 
and um, like the park is full of, of different buildings. There's only there's only two left um, from that time. One is the, the current museum building, and actually I'm going to go back to that later on with a project that we're just working on at the moment, and uh, and the mayor's pavilion, a small little building in space, in sorry, in space in the Surrey Park space. Um, D this is talking about um, 3D printing in general. Like, what's you know, what's the story with 3D printing? Because it's it's a little bit tricky to get your head around. Because it's, you know, it's great for certain things. It's terrible for other things at the moment that you might expect that it would be a solution for. So, um, I might give you a little idea, some insights into that. And um, it's great for emailing spanners to space and printing them on board. Um, um, when you're in space, thing, simple things become v extremely high value. Um, I remember Richard Branson talking about how a, a pocket knife uh, uh, became extremely important when he needed to cut a rope uh, when he was in a hot air balloon, you know, um, and was in an emergency situation. Things become really high value suddenly that had no value for a long time, and uh, so. You know, emailing spanner into space and being able to print it off and actually use it. Um, it's cool. You know, prosthetic prosthetic limbs, obviously high. 3D printing at the moment is, you know, if, if for small small scale high value things, it's really really good for. Um, for standard things, um, people don't want to pay money for, you know, plasticky things. That we expect kind of will be made in the factory. Um, they're printing buildings. That's not a very um, impressive building, but it's just the fact that it's, it was 3D printed. It's, it's boring as hell, but it, it was 3D printed. Um, um, when you get into things like um, engines, engine parts, and um, you know, like small mechanical devices, like the thing is that uh, 3D printing can produce objects that you can't make any other way. Um, because you can make things that you know you can make you can make joints that are moving joints um, in the printer and we take it out like there's no assembly required like normally you have to assemble things you know somebody has to in an assembly you know, stick things together or screw things together or whatever um, with it with 3d printing you can you can print a whole engine assembly or you know maybe a, maybe an entire engine um, so there are things like um, you know Rolls Royce for printing engine parts. Um, you, you can also you can also um, optimize your design um, because of the process of like you know t take for example like injection molding. Um, you have two uh, two two hard steel blocks uh, typically come together like that, and there's a cavity in between, and then. Um, plastic uh, gets injected into the cavity, it gets cooled down, and then the parts come apart like that, and you've got your, your, your part. There, there's a lot of limitations, like that physical process has a lot of limitations to it. Sometimes you have parts coming in at the side, and you know, you, you, you may not just have two parts, you may have like multiple parts coming in at different angles, but that's a really, really you know, expensive um, process to put that stuff together. When you can have one machine just kind of go feed in the digital file and get the thing made, then there's, there's lots of opportunities to optimize things. Um, um, so, um, uh, talking about the education side of things, um, in, in, in relation to 3D printing, um, um, Designer Dojo is, is a, a project that uh, resulted from a conversation between myself and Bill Lowe, one of the uh, co-founders in Coder Dojo, um, and um, really, like, I didn't know what it was going to be. It was actually kind of started out as kind of kind of a commercial thing, um, but it, it became a it actually became a, um, a non-profit thing. <laughs> um, really. Um, it's just tackling the problem of getting this information to to kids because it's like there's kids and there's all this cool uh, tech and you, you're trying to get them together and the education system has no way of doing that like it has absolutely no there's no connection between technology 
and kids um, and so it's a real it's a big problem um, so really what we're, what we're, we're doing um, is running you know a dojo on Sundays in town and uh, showing the kids you know what what technology is there how to how to access it and how to um, how to produce stuff and uh, really you know I, I, I treat it as like a, it's like here's here's start your own business kind of kind of idea you know as a, as a designer like the designer now becomes a manufacturer like um, whereas you know before now you had to be friends with Henry Ford, you know, or you know, some guy in crops, or you know, um, now you actually have the, the tools in your in your own armory to to do things that only they could do before. And um, so it's a good idea to get the information up there. I think so. This is just a, a view of the the web workhouse. Um, the, the yeah, the the the, um, the ground floor is where we we run the. And the dojo with the kids there, kind of on the on the right hand side there. Um, we, we have a screen. This is this the, the cool thing about virtual modeling is you can kind of spruce up a place and you just like redesign it because like I just felt like I felt like putting an image on the wall there, so I just put the image on the wall and I felt like upgrading the all the uh, computers <laughs> and so I just did you know um, and so on. You know you can mess around with stuff. The, the poster, the designer dojo poster, is actually from a photograph that's inserted in the model. Um, some of the stuff that we have done, um, the kids made these things here on the left. No, okay, I, okay. Admittedly, I designed the box there on the on the top, like designer dojo box. But um, the 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 other um, objects there are uh, kids got a hold of Tinkercad, which is free. It's a free resource there, tinkercad.com. It's software that's on the web. And they took, uh, they basically, were able to, you were able to just kind of like take shapes, reorganize them, resize them, and put them together, delete shapes from, delete negative shapes and positive shapes, and, and just make stuff really fast. So we put, we basically let the kids Luke's on with this software and lobbed it in, lobbed the designs into a printer, and um, this is um, th this is what they produce. The, the uh, you see, you could uh, work on SketchUp over there on, on the top, right? And uh, the um, we did a print of the Lusitania, and actually that's going to the coolest projects awards um, on on uh, this Saturday. Um, so again, we worked this up in in, in Tinkercad, um, but we took a we took a SketchUp model from an online database, three D warehouse, pulled that in, and we were able to refine the model in Tinkercad, and then push that out as an SDL file, which is a print file, and and print it. Um, so yeah, how does three D printing work? I don't know. Like, uh, would I just briefly go through that? Um, Okay, so um, this is the printer we have. It's a Stratasys Mojo. It's like it's about you know that wide. Um, it's it's an incredibly boring machine. Um, it 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 doesn't do sexy. Like it, the, the the only thing sexy about it is the name Mojo. After that, it's really just you know it almost the designers are like please pass me by because I'm not interesting. Um, but what it does is really, really good. Um, wh when it's printing, you can't even see it printing. It's, it's like this dark cave inside the behind the glass, and you can't. There's no LEDs. The maker bot is is the opposite. It's all razzmatazz. Um, it doesn't quite deliver, um, but it looks good. Um, <laughs> <laughs> whereas this is the exact opposite. Um, so the you open up the top of the machine and there's a there's a kind of it's like a it looks kind of like a, a printer you know like you pop in they're not cartridges they're heads um, and the, the 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 pipe contains the the tube contains a plastic uh, coil um, and the plastic is pulled into the head and it's just you know it just pushes out plastic at an ultra thin layer onto. It's pattern drawn onto a surface, 
and then that pattern is repeated but just slightly differently and then you know if you keep doing that you get you get an object um, there's two heads in this one is support material um, this is me taking um, this is me actually taking uh, that model out of the machine um, it, the nine parts there all jammed together and we've just made it production run. The white stuff is support material, it's basically scaffolding. So when you when you go up, like if you if you just try this experiment, um, you know, build a, a concrete block wall and then try building um, like a, a, an extension going up that way. You you'll quickly find that uh, gravity becomes a problem. So um, you, you need you need scaffolding to build something out. Um, you know, so that's what that white stuff is. Um, but because it's plastic, obviously, it's got its own uh, ability to stand up once you form it, and then you take away the scaffolding, it's, it's, it stays put. This is just an example of something we did on the printer. Um, it's the Sammy Black Bridge in Dublin. Um, and the base was printed in Holland because we don't, the base is, you know, it's about, about a foot, um, which we can't print in one part, otherwise that would be in one part over there. Um, so we got that printed in Holland, we printed the bridge in, in different sections and put it together, it kind of like Lego, and used um, thread to, um, to create the tension rods instead, because the tension rods you can't print, those are it's too thin. Um, so the, the digital cities. Um, so I'm just going to show you a video of um, uh, this online resource, which uh, I'll be making several copies of. It's um, it's basically you take the the model and you upload it to SketchUp or sorry SketchFab and um, SketchFab.com, and you can put your own um, markers on the on the model and um, annotate annotate the model as you, as you as you want um, and that become that's so that's an interactive thing that you can have on a tablet so you're basically like you know put pinch zooming and um, um, interacting with the the buttons that you create on the on the, on the model and um, we're putting it into the Long Valley. We're putting um, a tablet into the Long Valley pub um, to allow um, customers to um, browse the city. And um, we're going to see how how that works out. But um, it uh, it hopefully it will be uh, interesting and successful. Um, this is just just to show. Um, one of, one of the things I like to try and get across is I just play this video here. Um, is the number of outputs you can get from a virtual object. Um, so you can create um, you, you can create prints. You can create create videos. You can create interactive um, um, objects. On, on, on tablet or in, in any immersive environment um, and you can also create you know your standard like maps and printed maps so like from the one up from the one resource you're getting four products so that's that's pretty good that's you know, 400 percent of productivity from one thing um, in you know one way of putting it but um this um, idea, as well as at Cork 3D Printing Museum, is um, is an idea about getting the uh, message of 3D printing across to the to the wider public. Um, I wanted to um, enclose the printer in a in a fancy glass case and and show the um, you know show, show some of the products of, of 3D printing inside the case and use lighting and, and you know basically show off what 3D printing you can do because um, there's nothing there you know we all talk about 3D printing and it's cool and um, and so on but there's no examples of it and people say oh, I've never seen anything and, um, so we want to create a place in town where people can actually see it or just just pass by it and, and so yeah I, I originally I put this up to, to um, 
uh, I said to the audience in, in, in City Hall when I presented this, um, I, I asked them to send on their bank details and login codes uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. to this address so, could, uh, so they could help out with the 3D printing museum project. Um, these are just uh, some of the uh, partners that have helped us out in the Institute, Science Foundation, <coughs> Cafe Eco, the Web Workhouse, and uh, Cork Internet Exchange. And where uh, they've, they've been great uh, help. Um, they're laying the big uh, cable on shore that will create a huge uh, internet hub for a, a data hub in Cork, which is kind of um, taking data you know, from uh, uh, transatlantic and to to, to Europe. Um, anyway, so th this is just. I, I, I joined this uh, company here. There is there is a relevance to to the talk here. Um, uh, retail everywhere is basically what what we're talking about doing is um, getting um, mimicking your environment on a on a mobile in an interactive three D model, and then uh, browsing browsing that model um, and creating a virtual shopping experience. Um, so we're going to be doing this with Cork, we're putting Cork on in 3D on a mobile phone and allowing you to actually do your shopping um, through the through the app. And um, that's the end of that part. Um, I'll, how, how much time Five minutes. Five, okay. Um, so I'll just show you a couple other things. Um, <coughs> okay, so in, in SketchUp, um, Okay, so th this is the Cork City model, and like, I'm going to go into this, and then just like, you know, like take. You know, that, so that's that's a, a live object that, um, that, that the thing is created in. Um, th this is um, this is the um, historical model of the city that um, this is interesting because what we did here was um, took the took the same area of the modern city and then um, took historical maps and then superimposed the historical maps on the you know the, the physical reality of, um, of of the city so we're kind of able to create a context that hasn't you know that's very hard to create otherwise um, where you know where, where you can show kind of the, 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 the real context of, of the, um, the old city. I have to say that like, this is a, a, a model from 1690. And it's, it's amazing to me how, uh, how, how accurate it, it, it was um, to, you know, to be able to superimpose like, um, the, the existing um, Elizabeth Fort onto you know the, the the streets that surround um, North South Main Street, um, and it, it, it ties in really well, which it should. But you know, you'd be wondering. Um, so we were able to grab kind of models from 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 three uh, D warehouse and pop them into uh, into this model. And this is the Marie Celeste. You know. I'd like to show this. We, we could do kind of an animation of the bolts going in and out and stuff as well. That's another thing I'd like to do. So I'm going to do some videos. I'm going to do some footage and get historians to uh, talk about the development of the city. So I'll just provide, like, here's the visual stuff. Can you give us a, a commentary on, on on the city? Um, you see, um, just some of the other things. Uh, okay. We, we, we're going to be... Popping that into Minecraft, but I, I, I don't, I don't have it done. But what I want to, what I want to do is show you some stuff we have done um, with, with Minecraft that is, uh, that is interesting. Um, let's see, let's do full screen on this. Um, okay, um, this whole three D thing is, is, is so cool. Like this. This game here, this game design is actually, um, this is a scan 
of my daughter, and that's been ported into uh, into Minecraft. So you can bring um, you can, uh, creating a file, created a file in um, as an STL, um, fixed it up in SketchUp, and then brought it into Tinkercad, and then exported from uh, Tinkercad into Minecraft. So the there is a connection now between Tinkercad and Minecraft, which is very exciting because now you can really create, and um, you can quickly create environments and bring them into uh, into Minecraft. Um, so I'll just show you the last couple of things I'll show you are um, the oh yeah. The, that's the, that's the interactive model. I just showed the, uh, the Designer Dojo website. Okay, now, um, the, the web address is actually designerdojo.ie, even though the, the, uh, um, the, uh, you've got the IP address appearing up there. Um, so designerdojo.ie, you've got all the res these resources. Um, so I, I'd, I'd really recommend to anybody who know anybody with kids or have kids um, to check out this website. Um, and there's lots of interesting stuff here for kids to get involved in uh, 3D modeling. Everything is is freely available. Um, and one of the, one of the resources that we link to is is, is Tinkercad. Um, Tinkercad is really cool. Uh, you can get into 3D modeling really quickly. Um, and um, so I think that's all I said. Any questions? Uh, yeah, uh, does Tinkercad accept uh, um, STL or what, what type of uh, um, files can it accept in, as input? Um, it accepts STL or AVG um, in images. Um, I think AVG. AVG. AVG, maybe it's a SVG, sorry, SVG, SVG, scalable vector graphics, yeah, yeah, and um, I was going to sign in there and check, but I, I don't need, it's, it is, yeah, SVG, um, is, is this a web-based application, it's, it's a web-based application, yeah, it's, yeah. it's, it's um, or is it a I mean, I only know, I'm, I'm a little bit weak on, uh, on technicalities and this, um, uh, I, I believe it's uh, running on JavaScript. Yeah, yeah, JavaScript was, yeah. Maybe maybe WebGL fits within the framework. I don't know. Um, yeah, yeah, the, the JavaScript yeah. framework. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> Any, anything else? Uh, uh, any suggestions for cheap uh, 3D printers for people who wants to, to play around? <coughs> yeah, I I, I I very uh, a very simple outlook on that. Um, and you, you, you've kind of, you, you've kind of um, two ends of the spectrum. Um, one cheap is 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 great if you have time mm -hmm. to fix it, right? <laughs> um, and really, you gotta love the machine. Um, you gotta really love the machine. Which is the um, main part. Have a lot of patience. Um, <laughs> MakerBot. Um, I I look. I I can't recommend MakerBot. Ultimaker is is a good. Is a good, a much better bet mm -hmm. for um, the let's say the the, the, the hobby end, and mm -hmm. um, the the Stratasys Mojo is in the ten grand yeah exactly. kind of <laughs> area, so it's like um, I, I'm just really lucky to have because it's like you press print and you go home and then you come back and it's like it's done, and um, it's not really you know you you're you're having to watch the machine print. Um, or have a webcam trained on it and check it every you know, half hour because you get a lot of spaghetti going on. I know. <laughs> um, and, and and as like there's no you can't kind of say that it's not a business proposition. It's a hobby um, situation. Yeah, good stuff. Is the uh, the process the uh, is it, I mean obviously the printer is expensive itself. But what about the material? So I'm just curious. Is it like the process of it, like uh, printing that is it 
Um, you know, like when you go to buy normal printer cartridges, they cost uh -huh. a fortune, like, you know, so I'm just wondering what the uh, yeah, like expenses I, are. I would say, like, th there's around 200 euro worth of oh, really plastic in that. Yeah. Yeah. Is it fairly robust then, where if the say you're putting something that's kind of like high, I mean, is like, what's the strength? Like, is it yeah, yeah the, strength, the strength is the strength is good if yeah. if you design it properly. Uh -huh. You know, you want to have good, and um, you know, if you're making like something like large, like you'd want to have it hollow and and design it so that it's 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 got a a, a, a web structure inside it rather than being yeah. solid. Solid makes it brittle. Yeah. Um, a web structure gives it that, um, you know, avoids the cracking kind of oh, situation. Okay. You know, yeah. it it just you, you need a kind of a feel for the yeah for the structure and that kind of integrity. So there's a lot of design considerations. Yeah. There's a lot of yeah. There's, yeah, there's, yeah. There's, there's a lot of design considerations. Like there's some things which are really simple. So you know, people come to me and ask me about getting something done, and I kind of I kind of say, like. You know, have you got ten grand handy for for something? And on the other hand, something that's just slightly different is like, oh yeah, I, I yeah, I can rustle that off, you know, tomorrow mm -hmm. uh, for a, a tenner. You know, it is it it's you just need to know like what's involved in in, in different things, you know. But the design is it, the design is the big thing, like you know, some, like somebody just knows how to design stuff. Like what we're doing with the kids now in Designer Dojo is um. It's equivalent to kind of a master's program, in, you know, in college, because like you've got the facilities, and you've got, well, you know, um, because because I've been through the mill, I'm able to like give them the full story on like mm -hmm. you know what like, you know designing stuff, but it's it's great. I mean, anybody who's interested can can do it. You, you know, and it, like it should be it should be much more accessible. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, it's obviously, it, it, I imagine it's very engaging for kids, like yeah. whatever, because still Lego and Minecraft thing as well. I mean, is there kind of a bottom layer of, like, is there a minimum age that like, kids, because I got a seven year old who might be interested in this, but I'm wondering, is he too young for... Yeah, for, uh, the, the only answer is, um, like, bring him, yeah. uh, bring him along, um, if, if you think, if you, sus if you suspect he might enjoy it, bring him along. It's it's kind of like, you know, there's kids can come along for half an hour, an hour, there's no just having you know, it's, it's it's pretty easy going. Yeah. Um, but definitely ask for like uh, ask for help and mm -hmm. uh, like so, like some the kids are starting to be able to help each other out, you know, mm -hmm. and um, it, which which is amazing, you know, you see you see them like Getting each other set up, you know. Yeah. Um, brilliant. Cool. Thanks. Do you provide a, a paying service if someone wants to get something printed? Yeah, yeah. Um, um, what we do is the, the machine, because the machine is a designer dojo's machine, so you can uh, like pay, like I can do, I can rustle up uh, a design and get it, get it printed, and then we you know, pay. Uh, Okay. A premium for the for the use use of the printer, but uh, yeah, I mean, I, 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 I do design services and um, I uh, I mean my 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 intention would be that there would be other people you know coming um, from the college who can get involved in this this thing as well. You know, I mean, I'd love to be able to kind of say, oh yeah, look, look, can you could you look after this guy here who's looking for. You know, stuff to be done, and um, it would be great to be able to do that too. You know, but at, at the moment, it's it's kind of it's all me <laughs> um, doing it. You know, anything else? Do you have any plans to use uh, anything like the Oculus Rift for viewing models or the sort of core? Um, or the car yeah, on mobile. Yeah, I'd definitely love to. Love to. Yeah, I'm actually the the and uh, the museum. Um, I'm talking to the museum about um, doing some stuff with them, like to do with 3D printing and and immersive um, uh, virtual environments as well. I think it's kind of ideal because it's kind of like the thing is like having the hardware set up and um, having it in a place where people can't uh, steal it. 
<laughs> at all. Yeah, um, and if you have that, you can get you can kind of show people how to set themselves up. But you need you need an environment where it, it's suitable for it to happen. You know, um, to, to to you know, like you need the place and you need the situation and you need the people to come along and you need those things happening. And it's very hard to set that up as a as a core need, as a core kind of purpose. You kind of need to stick it on to something that's existing, that's <coughs> already happening, like a museum where people are already coming in anyway and they're ready to look at stuff. And then you're just kind of going, well, yeah, here's a, check this out, you know. If you, if you want to get somebody printed with a, that, that your printer can't do, or say, is, is there anywhere else you can you can bring your designs, or can you send them off, or upload them on the internet? And you can, yeah, there's, there is there is um, Shapeways, uh, shapeways.com, um, and uh, like you, you look at the stuff that you can do here. Um, you can print in metal. Actually, I mean, they're, they're printing in uh, titanium down in Perry 2, and uh, Striper. Like they're printing knees and hips and, and, and I would say most most of us here will have bionic parts before we and um, proper clogs um, because like they're you know they're even like printing cartilage for like <laughs> we should all get ourselves scanned immediately because like we may need spare parts you know um, somebody loses a nose or, or an ear, uh, you can get, you can get yeah, cartilage printed. What they do is they print the cartilage and, uh, and, and grow skin around the cartilage and then they stick, they stick your ear on. Um, but it's made, like, I would like, browse this site, it's listed, like go to Designer Dojo um, for, for, for this stuff, D designerdojo.a, sorry dude. I'm, I'm such a Luddite, I don't, I haven't figured out how to get the, uh, the dress to show up properly here. I'm sure most people in the room probably started out in five minutes. Um, but it's designerdojo.ie and uh, there's, there's uh, good stuff there, you know, for anybody really. And it's not just, obviously, for kids. Um, I was going to just do one, uh, one thing, you know. People are rushing away. Could I get a lovely assistant? Uh, <laughs> just, um, you might just just hold hold that up there. This is an idea um, that uh, that I had for use of this. Because like the same thing is, um, people are kind of wondering, like, what do you do with the stuff? You know, what do you do with these prints? So I'm just gonna um, pull up a blank. Should have had this set up. Yeah. We'll just go plan, plan perspective, and so um, like one thing out for example is um, uh, I can show like this is the historic uh, center of the city. Right? So um, I'm just going to do this really, really rudimentary. rudimentary uh, for now, but um, like if I color that now, um, if I color that black there. Okay, so you can see the effect that you get um, with a, with a projector. Um, and what what I'd like to do, this is a proposal. The city library don't know about it yet, but um, I want to get a I want to get a projector and put it up like on a on a frame and have the model. On a, on, a, on a table and then have a console where you're clicking on different things and you know stuff is happening you know uh, projected down onto the model what do you think mm -hmm. nice isn't it and they i know they did it in san francisco they did some sort of thing they had like a really fancy projector that was doing like all kinds of sorry all kinds of lighting and, and things like that like that would be cool but that's expensive like this is <laughs> Is it's not? The projector costs a uh, You can get projectors from 50 euros. Oh yeah, no, I yeah, I know that, but um, like to do 
like to really make it work, like you got to have really like laser. I I think anyway. I mean, something I'm precise. Just, like. Yeah, yeah. Like you need a laser projector, like kind of. You know, you know, the, you know the way you know those ones that the dot moves really fast, so it looks like it's kind of like um, it's scanning so fast that it creates an image. That that's what I'm thinking, because like I I actually was messing around with this and trying to create colors on that is. All, all you get here really is like you gotta have like dark, light and dark, for now, you know, with 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 a normal projector, and that's actually a good. That's a that's a bright projector. You know? But um, but it'd be nice to have it moving as well. Like you could have a little video playing or something, you know, projecting that onto it. It'd be cool. But you, I think you gotta play with just black, you know, dark colors. So that's uh, that's all. Right. Thank you.